shut up. Really? Alrighty, alrighty. How many seconds? Ten seconds. Ten, oh. seconds. Ten yeah. seconds. Hello and welcome to the Kryptonite <laughs> Podcast. I'm Mark Stores with me as always is. I'm Chris. And Rob Morphy. Thank you all so very much for joining us for this week's episode. Top of the show. Uh, Patreon. Patreon.com slash Kryptonite Podcast. Thank you all who contribute over there. Stick around for the end of this episode. We have some shout outs to do. Shoot outs. Oh, um, $1 gets you a shout out and $5 will get you shout outs and some bonus audio. And of course, thank you all. Everyone that supports us. Oh, it's phenomenal. We appreciate it. We literally have dope the shit. best fucking fans in the world. Totally. Totally. Uh, hey, this week, actually, uh, I guess actually last week uh, on T Public, we launched a bunch of new designs. We got some new tees, Rob. We do. Tees, hoodies, yes. totes. The legendary black on black finally made its attack. We finally Sorta. did it. Sorta. We did it. So this is what we got <laughs> here, okay? So we have the black on black enigmatic entity. Shout outs to our buddy and listener, Patrick Sean Fuller, who actually gave us the idea like months ago. Oh, yeah. <clears> about totally. the enigmatic entity black on and black. And I remember I poo pooed it like a fool. You did. And I was I like, I stand Dude. corrected. And me and Sean were like, or me, me and Patrick, not Sean, me and Patrick Sean Fuller were like, you sure. know what, Rob? You're full. This is going to sell. It, you know you guys what? did. I remember when you got together and yeah, you handed me my, my full plate of crow and I yeah, ate heartily. We did. And it's, and it's selling because this right here, yeah. That's Patrick Sean Fuller right there. Oh. Yeah, you know what he has? Orange pauldron. Yes, he does. Yeah, exactly. You know why? He, he knows has, pauldrons. He has he has trooper armor, and he's into fucking sweet Nikes and shit, and cars, and fucking cute cats. So, you know. Wow. You're not into cats, though. It's been nice to see you guys. Um, totally. But, you know, me and Patrick. You're trying to make it. us jealous? I mean, you yeah. know, you can have a Patrick Sean in your life and a Chris and Rob. Can I? Can I don't I really? know. Really? No, yeah. we can. I, I feel like can. we're getting squeezed out here. Yeah, it's, exactly. work, it's not going to work out. <laughs> you don't know that. You he guys likes, are too similar. He likes dogs, and that guy likes cats. Ooh, like, yeah, oh, yeah. That I have a that's, cat. That's big for him. Yeah, but you don't oh, give a no. fuck about it. <laughs> 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 it's true. Uh, anyway, thank you, Patrick, for the idea for the Enigmatic Entity shirt. We definitely uh, it ended up working out perfectly. So we got the Black on Black Enigmatic Entity. Black on Black Heller Space. Which I love, by the way. That Which was dope as people shit. People were pretty stoked to see that. Um, the Goat King, which is just a, a the sweet goat with a crown, and I added my own little Danzig flair to it. It not, was nice. Not well sure done. if the people noticed that, but we got the Danzig flair happening, which is pretty fucking dope. Uh, miniature corpse goo. Oh, long yeah. coming. Which is our black metal slash death metal uh, tribute to, to the, the Cure, Cure UFO, UFO incident. Yeah. yeah, make sure that it's unreadable. Yeah, and you did. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, very, that is death metal. Yeah, it just has to look like branches. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's totally. If it looks like an autumn catastrophe, you have won. Yeah, yeah, totally. So check all those out. T Public, our shop. You can get there at hellorspace.com. And uh, yeah, thank you all everyone that's been ordering some merch. It's cool. Magnet stickers and pins are available there as well. So that's always dope. More to come. Um, oh, pod news. Rob and I are going to a convention. Yes, we are. We're going to a local mystic convention. Indeed. It mystic. Is, uh, mystic Con. Let me bring up here. Uh, CNY Mystic Con 2019. Uh, this is going to be Saturday, November 16th from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. at the, f- the famed Finger Lakes Mall. <laughs> Legendary. This is the mall amongst that, anyone who lives here. Yeah. We have talked about this mall countless times. Oh in this yeah, actually, podcast. we have. This is where Chris and I met. And it's where we all That's grew true. up. Yeah. I mean, this was our mall rat life. This our mall rat life now. Uh, yeah, is transformed into the Mystic Con. Of course, it's a decaying husk of an edifice now, but it's Mystic sad, Con will yeah. revitalize it for at least hours. I will on say Sunday. that. Uh, two weeks ago, I was there with my wife and the kids for the trick or treating at the mall, and it was ridiculously packed for having I don't know four stores in the place. That's awesome. There was like, like. Like hundreds of people, it was so crazy. It's like a beloved family member on life support. Yeah, like really. it's sad to go there, but I still like to it's go there every sad. now and again oh, and man. touch the walls and go. I remember when. Oh, I remember. You I'll remember. Sad. Sad. It's really it makes me depressed every time I go in there. I yeah, know. I get a little bit bummed out. But you know what? Rob and I are going to be there. Not on, being bummed out. Not being at all. bummed out. Yeah, right. Enthusiastic. On Saturday, and November 16th. Yeah. yeah. What date was that again? Saturday, November 16th, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. CNY Mystic Con 2019. And we've got happening here, we've got uh, psychics, holistic healers, paranormal team, cryptozoology, ufology, authors, vendors, crafters, speakers, live entertainment. What excites me about this live is that that flyer was put out before we signed on. So there's other cryptozoologists. So we're going to oh, co-mingle maybe. with other local 
crypto kids. Is it yeah. going to be like a weird street fight? Oh, is it going to be like West Side beat, Story? It's be like lots it. of snapping? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. <laughs> e- yeah. either, either we're going to click or there's going to be some cutting oh, quick. There you go. That's the way so, it works. So yeah, come check us out. And again, that is uh, November 16th. Finger Lake Small, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Robert and I will be there. Christopher, unfortunately, will not be there, but he may pop in later. He probably won't, but that's okay. It's a possibility. It, it he could depends. Be. He could be. We'll he's going mean, to update me through the day. It is a small <laughs> town, and we live there. Yeah. So it's possible. No, I could I could be there by like five. Yeah. So Chris, but I might be getting drunk. So well, he's going to either get drunk and just you know, or come to the Crypticon. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. We'll see. Chris is a wild card. I'm a wild card. <laughs> he always have. is. He's the danger boy. All right. So this week's episode, we are going back to cars. We are indeed. Back Paranormal cars. cars. We have been threatening this because we brought this up um, when we did The Curse of the Golden Eagle. This is what actually set me on the path um, when I dug this story up and could not find hide nor hair of it on the internet. Um, and then that led me to the Golden Eagle and, of course, Black Vulcan. And, and apparently there's a plethora of cursed automobiles out there. Yeah. But this is one of the core stories and one we promised to get to and one I'm really excited to finally uh, lay down. All right. So let's get started with Terror Drive. In Dubadilly. Oh, that sounds dope. Alrighty, in 1934, just as Hitler was ramping up the sinister war machine that would plummet Europe into years of blight and carnage, a Dutch newspaper photographer drove his jet black sedan to work, never anticipating that before the day's end, his cherished auto would be at the epicenter of an hours-long episode of road rage, as well as one of the oddest motor vehicle mysteries on the books. It ranks. Motor the vehicle books. mysteries, which is not the most common. Well, it's probably the most common for when you deal with like stolen cars. Well, but yeah, paranormal, right. perhaps. All right. Well, this is again, mysteries. man. We're we are technically hot on the heels of the Golden Eagle. So let's do well, this. That was Robert. some months ago. Well, I feel like we've given ourselves a little bit of an automotive yeah, bridge. Here. Listen, automotive lukewarm on the heels. <laughs> <laughs> At best. We are continuing our automotive reign of terror with our second car episode. (laughs) So true. (laughs) This is not jumping the shark, so whatever. Don't judge me. Let me do this. Thank you. From Disney's adorable Herbie the Love Bug to Stephen King's insidious Christine, filmmakers and writers have been fascinated by the thought that one of mankind's nearly ubiquitous pieces of technology, the automobile, might for good or ill, be imbued with life, or at least a will, of its own. Some have imagined this miraculous event to be filled with fun-loving, childlike antics, while others depict a murderous, inhuman rampage, but very few are aware of the fact that decades before any of its fictional counterparts, a pristine 1932 black sedan of French manufacture spontaneously took on a life of its own and rode hell-bent for leather on a 30-mile stretch of Dutch highway, charging at pedestrians and running the cops off the road in a brief but un unforgettable reign of two-lane terror on the blacktop. I respect the Hellbent for Leather reference. Mm, Hellbent. Thank you. Hellbent for Leather. Indeed. On the morning of September 13th, 1934, Vincent Mansfeld, great name, classic name, Chief Vincent Mansfeld. Mansfeld. That's great. Chief photographer of the Rotterdam Evening Newspaper sat behind the wheel of his sleek French sedan driving the 72 miles from Rotterdam to Eindhoven in order to take pictures of the opening of a new power plant. There's no reason to assume that Vincent felt anything but good as he made the over-hour-long trek. He loved driving and took great pride in his two-year-old vehicle, which he spent most of his free time tinkering with the engine and polishing its shiny paintwork. The car was far and away his most prized possession, which is why he went through the trouble and expense of having a unique anti-theft switch fitted. Oh, now, we've got some old school. 1934 yeah. anti-theft, anti-theft action. Theft. Kill the engine. No gas feed to it. Oh, oh look what? at you. Look yeah. at you, historian. There you go. That's how you do it. Although the specifics of how it worked when unrecorded, one can presume that once the interior control was activated, no one but its owner or a very lucky car thief would be able to find the engine's kill switch and disengage it. 
For the 1930s, it was nearly foolproof. And I'm pretty sure it's essentially what Mark just described. It's a, yeah. It's a, it's it's a hidden kill it's switch? An engine kill switch yeah. where you just, you fucking hit it and you're not going to get any combustion happening, so... Combustion. I mean, obviously, he, he could have rigged up something completely fucking, you know, Super Mario. Like, who knows? Sure. Like, it could have been it, mad it, tech. It could be something. Let's assume totally it was pretty crazy. straightforward. Yeah. Vincent arrived in Eindhoven, or Eindhoven. I don't know how I'm going to say it. I'll probably switch it a lot. And parked his car in the main square. He removed the ignition key, turned the secret switch under the dashboard to render the engine immobile, and locked the doors. All routine actions for the experienced motorist. Vincent hefted the camera bag onto his shoulder and walked away from his auto, having not even the slightest inkling that this was about to become one of the most stressful and bizarre days of his life. For that day, Friday the 13th, to be specific, indeed, was the day that his car drove itself away. On Friday the 13th? What other day? Dude. Was there a hockey mask around? Surely. Yeah. There are no eyewitnesses who chronicled the car's first spontaneous sparks of sentience. Did it sputter as its self-awareness slowly dawned or roar full-fledged to life in the midst of the usually quiet town square? Was it born like a baby zebra, still wobbly on its own feet, or was it more akin to a sea turtle ready to dig its way out of the dirt and plunge headlong into the sea at the moment of birth? You're welcome My for both. baby zebra. God. I'm, I'm like, <laughs> I didn't what just the to see the looks on your faces. I mean, I'm, uh, I'm oh, like, Jesus, it's a car that came to, uh, did it really just turn on by itself? Did it? I don't know. Clearly. According to your writing, it it, it was a baby zebra. Oh, was it a baby zebra? Born of a, a turtle. Kin. Or was it a diligent sea turtle knowing full oh well where God. it was going and how to get there? You... Or was it a wobbly little wee giraffe wow. doing its best to suckle from its mother's teeth, wow. not knowing what this life was all about and what would come next. You went ultra deep with that one. <laughs> Thank you. Girl. You're all welcome. Congratulations. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking <Yeah>. zebra. <laughs> Even more enigmatically, what could have caused this inanimate collection of manufactured parts to become conscious? Did some diabolical agent take the controls or was a brief yet inexplicable miracle of modern physics to blame? We simply do not know. What we do know is that the now seemingly self-aware vehicle was next seen at around 2.30 p.m. by a road worker named Peter Cromelin. Peter was hand mowing the grass with a scythe along the side of the southbound thoroughfare just a few miles outside of Endhoven, not far down the road, when, excuse me, not far down the road, he spied a gleaming black sedan round the corner at speed. So he's just sighting yeah. his way. Kind of reminds me of the guy that was working the fucking the grass when, what was that creature that attacked him? The one that was like a pig, a boar ape with big teeth. The, not the kinder hook. What the hell was it? The monster that oh, chased the poor yeah, hand yeah. mower around his car six yeah, times until right. he got away. I can't remember what the hell was. What the hell My was God, called. we yeah. suck. You know, we're not perfect. All right, I'll tell you what. This this car came to life. Hand mowing is a dangerous job. I think we can all acknowledge that. Well, yeah. I, yeah. I mean, in the 30s, you don't have a choice, though. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. You're it's a, hand, it's your a hand, scythe and your sweat. And your that's hand it. scythe and everything. So we, got, we, we have a conscious car on the loose. At speed. At speed. At speed. Yeah. At Peter speed. paid little attention until it suddenly lunged over the center line and made a beeline directly towards him. Terrified, he threw himself to the ground on the left. The vehicle's tires chewed up the grass, narrowly missing the petrified road worker before veering back onto the road and speeding away. That was like a attempted, close call. That was an attempted murder. Yeah, it was. Yeah. That the police should be informed. The attempted vehicular manslaughter. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Shaken, Peter stumbled to his feet and screamed some choice expletives at the quickly vanishing vehicle before it was gone. Peter noted that even though there was nothing to obstruct his view through the back window, he could not see the head of the car's driver. First clue. All right. No one's behind the wheel. So the it seems. The car has come to life. It might be a little oh, premature, oh. but no, I mean, that's oh, pretty much we wouldn't be doing it if that wasn't the case. I'm just, just, so, just yeah. saying that. Figuring the reckless motorist must have been too short to see, Peter took down the license number of the car and then bounded off to a nearby house to telephone the police. This would be only the first in a terrifying series of incidents that would plague both pedestrians and the police along the 24-mile stretch of asphalt leading from Endhoven to Tilburg. 
The police patrol situated just 10 miles outside of Tilburg was alerted to the situation and laid in wait for the offending auto. As prepared as they were to take chase, the sedan scorched by at such a pace that by the time that the police driver had pulled out, the highway was already empty. This thing is that is a slow start, or that thing is falling ass. This thing yeah. is fucking rocking and rolling. Or the 1934 police cruiser was just not yeah. up to the challenge. Yeah. Well, it, really, it could be like half a dozen to one. Automobiles six in the, the other. 30s were questionable. Yeah, they were barely They were barely past not the, horses. Like, they, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they were like barely past the crank. Remember that? In front of the car, the old oh, crank? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just beyond the crank yeah. tech. Okay. Police officials were baffled not only by the car's seemingly impossible speed and evident ability to make itself invisible, because at this point they think <laughs> it must have disappeared in a grand diabolical fashion. <laughs> it didn't kinda... just like, I don't know, turn the corner while we slowly moved away. What is it? A fucking <sighs> bird of prey has cloaking? <laughs> 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 I cloak totally. on it. You rock tech. I'm so yeah. proud it's of you. night gall. <laughs> yeah, I do. Fucking, oh my God. That's all I know about Star Wars is birds of prey. Make yourself invisible. That's oh. Star Trek, you mean. Oh, sorry, Star Trek, yeah. <sighs> Whatever. Oh. Me and Patrick are going to go watch Star Wars together. Fuck off. Wow. Yeah, you confuse that? Star Wars and Star Trek and you're saying Whatever. That you is know a little what? hurtful. Whatever. Wow. <laughs> Again, the whatever. <laughs> whatever. Three times is a charm. Continue, Rob. I will try. With this cloaked 1930s <laughs> debacle. <laughs> Let me go back a little. The police officials were baffled not only by the car's seemingly impossible speed and evident ability to make itself invisible but also by the fact that, like Peter Cromlin before them, the patrol unit reported that either the driver was extremely small or there was no one piloting the car. He'd have to be really short. Really short. Could be a child. You're right. Can't little, take short round out of it. No. A little three-year-old behind the wheel. <laughs> short this. round. I mean, come on. Temple of Doom. A kid yeah, driving be. his okay. balls off to save Indy. It makes yeah. sense. No, right. that's probably what he was doing. At about 3 p.m. outside a tiny village just a few miles down the road, a group of people were crossing the road for the bus stop when the sedan barreled toward the surging throng. With shrieks of dismay, the crowd dispersed and ran for their lives as the self-possessed vehicle hurtled through. By the time the police patrol arrived at the scene, the car had once again vanished without a trace. Or kept going Cloaked. i mean it's not really vanishing it's just it's fast i mean there are marvelous elements fantastical elements of the story one being that there's no evident driver one being that it seems to be going faster than most cars of the era were right. able to go apparently the thing that is not mysterious is the thing that keeps mystifying these police that it vanished why is it not still here when we <laughs> yeah. arrive minutes later why is it not parked because it's moving fucking forward yeah, it's That's still why. going yeah. it didn't Inertia stop. Is still Congratulations. A new yeah, bodies it, in motion well, no, it, it, it didn't stop and let the people cross the cross and walk I'm like I'm gonna parallel park and parallel park and wait for the police to show up I'm like you got me and it's not did, what it, it does. did not do that no it didn't no no while all this was going on, Vincent was making his way back to the town square. As the photos he shot were not due to appear until the next day, he had decided to take his time and attended the official luncheon following the opening. But when he'd arrived at the spot where he had left his car, he found nothing but an empty space. Livid, Vincent rushed to the police station and reported the theft of his treasured vehicle. At nearly the same moment that Vincent was excuse me, describing the car to the police, the self-same sedan was running headlong into a herd of cows that, that were being driven along a stretch of side road running along the highway to Tilburg. Now it's going after the cows? That's some Nothing bullshit. safe. All right. And you know, a car is going to lose against a herd of cows. Like a couple of cows are going to be damaged, but in the long run, cars lose. Depends how big a car is, I think, or truck. Well, right, if, but if this isn't a Mack truck barreling through. This is the 1930s. It's yeah. not like... Yeah, it's true. It's true. A 1930s sedan versus a cow. Cow. Well, cow dies, but cow wins. True. Oh, God. It's barely I, metal. Yeah. It, <laughs> it's barely non-organic. Yeah. The cow stampeded in terror as the car blasted through them without slackening speed. Like the others, the baffled rancher herding the livestock reported, I couldn't see anyone in the driving seat. 
not realizing that the missing auto was the same one that was terrorizing the thruway, the police officially marked Vincent Sedan as missing, presumed stolen, and the despondent photographer shuffled out of police headquarters and decided that he had to catch the train back to Rotterdam. Little could have anticipated that at the very same moment he was walking to the station, his car was continuing to wreak havoc along the roadway. Well, this guy's all bummed out that his car got it's his, stolen. It's his prized possession. Yeah, but it came to life. So it's like Frosty the Snowman <laughs> well, with yeah, fenders. Exactly. Maybe. And instead of bringing childhood joy, it's bringing no. terror and mayhem. Right. Yeah. Bovine death. Yeah. <laughs> Bovine death. The last and most harrowing incident pitting the police against the runaway car occurred outside the hamlet of Visser. A little painless. Classy place. Cool. Police, off- police officer Hans Maunders spied the rogue vehicle speeding down the motorway and he accelerated up to 70 miles per hour intending to force it onto the grass Oh, we got like a police chase now. Oh, yeah. Oh, cool. Hans pulled up beside the sedan, hoping to give the driver one last chance to pull over before he would be required to force him off the road. But as soon as he pulled alongside the car, the officer realized that the mystery motorist did not exist. He, Hans excuse me, spent nearly five full seconds peering inside the sedan, but there was nothing to be seen. He later testified... I am prepared to swear any oath that there was no one in the car. Oh, so this shit. Isn't just, any oath. Up, up until this point, you know, maybe Peter Cromelin was mowing the lawn or the unidentified rancher or the group of people waiting for the bus. Maybe they were in such a tizzy or so scared because they almost got ran over. They're like, fuck, it's a tiny, it's a little person driving or a small child or what the fuck. This is a cop riding, you know, Side to side, right there, staring in. Sees no one. Five full seconds, and in the state of you know high adrenaline, five seconds is a long time. But all right, all right. There's no but. I mean, you're looking in. There's nobody fucking driving. There's nobody fucking driving. If the driver was ducking and hiding, yeah, that's completely possible in the 1930s, man. (laughs) Yeah, really. Well, all right. I don't know what French made sedans were. You know, I don't know their size, their construction. I don't know what Dutch police cars looked like at the time. Nope. But assuming that even they're roughly parallel, and they, this person would have to be way low and then like just like pinching the base of the steering wheel <laughs> in the tiniest yeah, way. Mean, yeah, but and I then won't... not being able to see where they're driving at all at right. the same time, like having no view of the road. Yeah, all right, all right. Well, for about five full seconds is you know. I'm sorry. Did you well, understand? that he was prepared to swear under any oath, oh. biblical, Tunisian, Sumerian, don't break oath the of oath. the bear. Don't, oh. oh, don't break the oath. Don't break the oath. Don't break the oath. Oath of the crop, crop. The crop. <laughs> the what? I didn't it even sounds know. like a German What legend. was I even trying to say? You I don't know. know. I like it. Oath of the crop. Despite the lack <laughs> of an oath of a crop, despite the lack of a driver, Hans ma- Hans maintained his original plan and tried to edge the offending vehicle off the road. But the driverless car suddenly swerved al- across the lurch, forcing the police car into the curb, grinding off its rear side tire. Oh, shit. So, so this blew a tire they're right They're trying now. to fucking get this whatever mystery vehicle off the road. Right. And this car either autonomously or with a very tiny criminal driver says oh eat it and (laughs) then grinds their cop tires off so they're all blown out all right although the police cruiser was able to stop without injury to its crew it was unable to continue pursuit and the ebony enigma drove away and out of sight This would be the last moving violation reported regarding the self-propelled paradox. At 3.30 p.m., a policeman on patrol found Vincent's car parked at the curb near Tilburg Town Hall. It was covered in dust, and its once pristine side panels now bore evidence of severe scraping. But the vehicle's rampage of road rage had finally ceased. So, cows, bus goers, cops lawnmowers but to all its, in jeopardy to its credit it didn't kill anybody no so no. you can i mean the golden eagle was in the same area as how many murders yeah the golden eagle didn't technically kill anybody either. Ki- kids it's got right, hit well, onto yeah. it yeah yeah like kids get hit by cars and got thrown it, onto like, it. it suggested nefarious shit to other cars yeah, and exactly. those cars yeah that's more like an it. accident like magnet yeah. yes yeah but so far this car though this car has not um 
It's committed a plenty of a traffic violation, but not killed anybody. Ah. Good. Well, yeah, that's the deal. Like, yeah. There's, there's right. different theories. We're okay. going to have to all right, let's, we'll deal with that in a all second. Right. Okay. When the, when the locked car was eventually opened, the police found that the ignition was off and the kill switch was still engaged. Huh. Yet the gas tank was virtually empty. Authorities, not surprisingly, ordered a full inquiry into the matter. Vincent was brought back to Endhoven, where he swore in front of a judge that he had lent his car to no one. Other eyewitnesses, including police officers, corroborated their initial reports by reiterating that although the car was accountable for not only reckless driving but attempted vehicular manslaughter, not a single one of them had seen the driver responsible. Hans Monders and his fellow officers, much to the vexation of the presiding magistrate, were forced to admit that the car had no driver and for all intents and purposes was piloting itself. Legit court records. All right. The judge is not happy. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's a bad day in court. It is. Not good. Despite the overwhelming testimonial evidence to the contrary, the judge became enraged by what he deemed to be nothing more than an elaborate fantasy and a waste of the court's time. The furious justice adjourned the inquiry and it was never again reopened. So it just, no verdict, just fuck off. Piss off. Yeah. While Vincent Mansfield was never held criminally responsible for the ostensibly self-motivated actions of his 32 sedan, the incident nevertheless took a toll on the young photographer, for not only did he sell his once prized vehicle to a scrap metal dealer, but despite his lifelong passion for automobiles, from that day until his death in 1950, Vincent would never drive a car again. That seems kind again. of overboard. Yeah. I mean, it's not like he was involved. Yeah, he just was taking photos and this car fucking took off on, on him. On the other hand, if yeah, everyone involved in a up. bad horror film know, scenario, man. like a haunted house or whatever, was like, you know what? I came really close. I got away. I'm not fucking around anymore. This world would be a safer place. I don't know. You're, Dude, let's, you're if, calling him a if punk, If you randomly you? got a car yeah, you know. and then I'll, you know you didn't drive it and all of a sudden like you had a car I was like, hey, uh, your car's... Uh, and all of a sudden, they just they tell you this whole story about all the shit that this car got involved with right. while you were just sitting there, like despairing on the train ride back Be, to Rotterdam. Like, How's this even possible? I mean, like, nobody was in I, it. I, and well, it, I'm possible. And then you, might, you get chewed out by the judge. Right. You probably got reamed out by your bosses because you were too depressed to develop the films, and the new power station right. looked like a big smudge, and you got fired. He ended up a shoe salesman. Wow. Vincent walking to work. Wow. Doesn't even use his camera anymore. Wow. All his love for the arts is gone because his car allegedly mysteriously turned on and didn't care at anybody. French sedans. Wow. Can you trust him? You can. You can. No. No. Jeez. All right. Can, can I give you guys a little postscript? Sure, please. Just a little, little twist of tender irony. All right. In a twist that would make even Rod Serling give a wry smile, it was announced in 2017 that Endhoven would be the first city in the world to implement self-driving cars for large-scale commercial use. Oh, shit. Perhaps the Founding Fathers were paying homage to one of the weirder moments in their city's history, or maybe it's just another case of the cosmos showing her adoration for ironic twists. Oh, so they're getting all the new Tesla uh, shit over there? All the funny. new self-driving Tesla stuff? Just an stuff? Odd, odd thing that we're this is kind first of funny. case yeah, weird. ever. Of a self-driving car. Yeah, weird. And here's the thing. Like, like, like you guys were saying moments ago, it's not like... Well, I mean, it seemed to swerve towards the guy. Seemed to. Um, and and but here's the thing: if you want to kill a group of cows or or kids, human cows just, going yeah. to a bus or whatever, just run yeah. them over. Then it seems like it would have been pretty easy to do that. No, yeah, yeah. You just, just go that way. I can't help but think that maybe for whatever reason, this car, self possessed or, or or whatever the agenda was, couldn't slow down. It right. had to drive this run. Maybe a decree from fucking some higher power or something. It's like, you have to get from here to here this quick. Try not to kill anybody. And it was doing its level best to not hit the, like, speed with Keanu Reeves, except sure. not. It's like Christine <laughs> meets speed. It's like, I had to do here. this, but not exactly. It's like Xanadu exactly. There's meets no Dennis Hopper. There's pirates. no Sandra Bullock. 
Yeah. It's maybe a tiny Keanu Reeves. But fucking this oh, it's car. adorable little John Wick. Little, 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 little tiny Reeves. Little tiny John Wick. Little tiny. Yeah. And if it goes, you know, below, I don't know what cars could do in fucking 33. If it goes goes below 34. <laughs> I don't know what I mean. Down there the was Tilburg a claim. Highway. There's a claim of 70 at some point. That's true. That's true. I, yeah. I feel like that. I wouldn't have thought in the 30s that 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 seems really fast. Well, even the if you got like doing, like doing 70, literally all it, it takes is three yeah. horsepower. I don't know anything about cars to go that fast. Like it doesn't take no, much. 70 is yeah. not really much. No. Yeah, but yeah. that could be redlining back then. Oh, it surely could have been. Could be. For a lot of cars I've driven, it's still redlining to this very day. I do day. seventy. I do seventy in my truck quite a bit, actually. As yeah, but you oh. probably have. A, yeah, but you got the all American, American Eagle, American <laughs> car now. So <laughs> what the sir. fuck do we do? V8. It is a Dodge Ram Bighorn, good sir. It's, Thank you. It's made out of reupholstered American flags that weren't burned. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I can't imagine feathers. they had that kind of. No, well, I mean, in the 30s, I mean, well, they, I, I could see you doing 70. 150 cc. I mean, I, I could see him doing 70. But even presupposing, say, 80 was the top line. We don't mm. know. But that's that doesn't have any bearing. Because the real mystery here is not how fast cars in the 30s go. It's how this one car goes All without right. a driver. So let's start skeptically speaking here that this guy is tinkering with his car and he installs a kill switch. Now, yeah, I'm not really super good with automotive shit. None like, of us I, are. I can watch YouTube videos and, and fix or change brakes or do, you know, like O2 sensors. Oh, and that shit. is six steps above me. I'm your guy. I, I can yeah, do I all know what that. you're talking about. But yeah. if he installs some sort of kill switch, I mean, what's not saying that whatever mechanism is controlling this, whatever it's doing is stopping a process. If for some reason something gets fucked up and it starts a process, you may turn the car off, but when you hit the switch, you might it might be hitting the ignition. Okay, that's and great. igniting it. So that officially means it hits the first object that's in front of it, and the story's over. That was my next thought, is that right. all, all it would do is you'd, you'd walk away, <laughs> you'd walk away, and all of a sudden the car would go, you know, it would just spin out, and boom, it would boom. hit. And, next park yeah. car or tree or curb or whatever the fuck is in the way. Which, there's actually a story with Chris where, didn't you have a car that would, like, idle at, like, 30? Yes. <laughs> So imagine being Chris in this car at a stop sign and it idles at no less than thirty miles. No, really. An hour. Oh, that's tough. I had to pop it into neutral at stops and then just pop it in drive and be like, Bruh. just so you wouldn't drag race everybody. Did I yeah. go next you when you had this car? I don't know. It was a Dodge, not Shadow. I remember you that you had a car that. It was you drove terrible. me home from work one Dodge day at person. the mall where Rob and I will be appearing at Mysticon twenty fucking nineteen. Nice plug. Uh, the, you, 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 you drove me home in a car that was like, it was bam, 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 bam. Like it was, it was all fucking all over the, was I had the Dodge Shadow. I had yeah. an Explorer for a while. Oh, I did an Explorer. That's and then right, the yeah. Saturn. So the Saturn was your last car. That was the last it, car I had. It died in that bar parking lot that we tried to get you out of, right? Oh God, that yeah, was a tough night. remember that? Yeah. 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 All right. So anyway. Cold. Chris's car that idles at 30 No, that was the side. Buick. Oh, was it a Buick? That was the oh, Buick. Oh shit, that was a Buick. Fuck. All right. So Chris's car used to idle at 30, so, you know. Yeah, so that sideline had nothing, <laughs> nothing at all, all to contribute to the no, story. that's fine. But it was a fun interlude. But if this car does for some reason, I mean, who knows how the, how the parking lot is set up. If there's nothing in front of him, if he's in a spot and it's open and the car goes, I mean, but then the next question is, how is it steering? Yeah, no shit. I mean, what you're I doing is waste time. Unless it's going into... A, a mischievous little person or a fucking or a well, diabolical criminal mastermind that, that is fucking was my a foot next, and a half tall my, like Wang Wang. My next uh, hypothesis be. is what if it did just get stolen and whoever was stealing it was just trying to, you know, duck out of people's view. All right, so even if that's the case. That is possible. Um, it is possible for a short distance. This is distance. all skeptically no, no, speaking. Are, are, I know, I know. But say you memorized the route from mm. Rotterdam to Tilburg or whatever the fuck it is. Um, you would still have to have a series of well-positioned mirrors to pull it off. And then you have to ask yourself another question. A, well, two questions. How do the cops not see the mirrors? And B, what is your overriding agenda? Like, is your real well, purpose, unless uh, unless it really is, unless, unless fucking Vincent Mansfeld did a little person real wrong once, and it's a complex vengeance plan I mean, I to don't... make sure he never drives again. <sighs> because otherwise, what are you doing besides... I'm trying to scare people, so I almost kill them, and they and they think the car had no driver. 
th there's no like overarching theme that makes sense for either a criminal or a hoaxer to do this. Well, every well, time somebody yeah, sees it, there's no no one driving, right? Yes. Yeah. So, that, that's only because it's when they see it. Exactly. So if this person <laughs> is driving and he sees a bunch of people and he's just like, whoo, going like this, goes down to the side, it's very possible. We're speaking skeptically. skeptically. That's tough. All right, I, I will grant you there is a that's thin possibility. That's tougher than a vengeful little person. No. A vengeful Wang right. Wang. They're all vengeful. Wang Wang. <laughs> <laughs> They're Wang all Wang vengeful. is not vengeful. He lived a fucking full, Actually, successful life. I know I love him. I not, dude, not he only did. do I know it, I I own all the documentaries and the one book written about him. Yeah, he was, I was, admire was he him like a, a lot. commando or no, something? No, there's, or a, lot special of, there's forces? a lot of myths. He was, it was a sad story with moments of glory. All right, well, Let's you know what? Way. He's forever loved in our all right, so in it, millions of people's So it hearts. wasn't a diabolical Wang Wang. Listen, I, I really, <laughs> I still think... If every time you see a group of people or a, a, a fucking herd of cows, you duck, you're taking a huge chance. If you're going straight, not really. Sure. I mean, if you're trying to steal a car, then yeah, you're taking a chance. Yeah, but I mean, if you're if you're on so a straight, so you guys away, are really thinking it's a car thief who is ducking a lot and then eventually runs out of gas in Tilburg and says fuck it and bails on the car. I don't want to be that guy. The, it's not not a possibility I, as opposed yeah, to except for except for Hans Monders. Who is riding fucking neck and neck, five full seconds, looking insane. Five seconds. I swear five to God. Seconds. Five seconds. Oh, five seconds of intense scrutiny. Five seconds is a long Going time. how fast? It's the 1930s. 70. And, and he's guessing. Oh, you guys. How fast? <laughs> Why am I even doing a podcast with you two? I don't know. No. But look, this is all skeptically speaking. We have to keep our... Listen. No, put, no, put you're your, right. It's a ghost. Put your yeah, <laughs> no, it's the devil. You're right. It's put, a possessed car. Put your skeptic <laughs> boots on. Go yeah. into the corner. Get your skeptic jacket. Go into the corner. Get your good skeptic hat. That's all we got to do. If you condescend to me one the, more time, the good, listen, the good skeptic yeah, hat. Listen, I know, not the shitty not one. Not the bad one. You know, the one that makes you look like a fucking the nice one. Like a destitute skeptic. The so clean. there is a possibility that this could be uh. some bizarre. You know, which, it very well could be. But then again, that's fucking super. Either that person's a great fucking driver, they, or they're just really fucking lucky. Both both are possible. Yeah, and I agree with you. Seventy miles per hour, five seconds. It seems dubious, but this is not just one cop in a car. No, it's there's one cop that looking. Saw this too. It's other cops in there. They're all scanning back and front. Right. And there's no indication. All right. And if they're so, even slightly elevated, they can see down. Right. I wish there was more specific information indicating no, whether know, they could do that. a little vague. There but... isn't. But I agree. I'm assuming we have to it... entertain at least the notion that it was a super crafty, super quick ducking car thief that just didn't have the sagacity to, I don't know, turn down a side road and escape with the vehicle. No. Yeah. He just wanted to barrel headlong through the most crowded people and, and groupings that he could find until he ended up straight down the road out of Dude, gas at the fucking town hall. It's the 30s. It's, it's Pre, possible. Pre-Hitlerian fucking automotive tech. Well, it, it was fucking mid-Hitlerian. Yeah. 38? Yeah. Dude. <clears throat> Oh, oh well, you know why? Because we didn't get until forty something, right? No, but dude, this wasn't thirty eight. This was this was thirty four. Oh, so, thirty four. So Europe was in jeopardy, but we weren't involved yet. Oh, okay, that's why. Yeah, because you know you know what that shows, Robert and Christopher, my ignorance. I only my wrote American, well, it was pre Hitlerian as for Hitler us. was well, ramping us, up his yeah. sinister war machine. Yeah. I gave you the goddamn words. Oh, I'm, it was pre Hitlerian for us. I'm sorry, it, it's my it American was. ignorance in shining all fairness, through. Everything was pre Hitlerian for the three of us. We were born after he. Allegedly died, oh, but his brain was still alive and well was, until Chris yeah. and I were in high school. Yeah, he could still be alive to this day. Only parts of him, yeah, small parts and clones. He's scattered yeah. across the globe until somebody puts him back together again. Oh, and then Hellboy That's always has how to come is. and kill him. The boys and girls from Brazil. There you go. Yeah, boom. Okay, so um, out of, Hitler's out, the of worst. The, out of the realm of skeptic, let's go to phantasmagorical. Could this car <sighs> be possessed? Could it be this? Could it be the devil? The Satan? Our dark lord, could it be possibly a calling from Jesus Christ himself? It could be. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, listen. What? <laughs> exactly. It could be listen, any of those things. Listen, you all heard the song, Jesus Take the Wheel. True. Yeah, Dude, well, he took I it. Literally... And he said, fuck you. And he took it, and he went. And he didn't stop until he almost got out of, ran out of gas. And so, then he stopped, and he was like, 
Fuck you guys. So that song is referencing a, yeah. this Jesus incident? Jesus Takes the Wheel references this story. When you feel like you couldn't drive, those skid marks were mine. <laughs> yeah, ex- yeah, exactly. When you can't bear to turn another corner, I'll turn it for you. Is that how the song goes? I do. <laughs> You're I'm writing no it as we speak. I have no idea. <laughs> when you can't parallel park. I really thought, thought that literally when I first heard that song that that's what it meant. Jesus Take the Wheel? I was like, oh, she's going to get in a car accident. She was like, I don't, I, I, I'm going to get in a car accident. Jesus Take the Wheel. And it's like, no, it's a metaphor. It it's, is. It's a metaphor yeah, for I'm, looking I'm fucking up my life. Help my really brother out. So wait, wait, wait. Jesus isn't driving? Well, he might be, in but a again, sense. All the questions, whether it's Jesus, the Satan, oh. some sort of demon, oh. an, an alien, <laughs> an alien, <laughs> oh, all wow. these questions still remain. Why? Okay, why? What's the agenda? What's the agenda? Yeah. What's the point of any of it, regardless of. of Who said Jesus yeah. take the wheel? What's in Tilburg is the real question. <laughs> you son of a bitch. Why did it have to go there? I don't okay. know. Why that car? Don't know. Maybe, Again, what's okay, the maybe, question still remain? Yeah, no. But okay, I guess maybe like uh, topographically speaking, that's the thing. Uh, what's the what's the route? Is it a straight fucking route? No, it's a pretty much straightforward route. So yeah. this thing just fucking this thing's in a parking lot, starts and just goes straight. For how long? A tiny madman makes sense in that I don't give fucks. I don't really want to get away with this Tiny car. Mad I'm man. not here to fuck it. And, and you know, it's a pristine 32 not, French well, no, sedan. Actually, yeah. a kid if, would make the most sense. Like, uh, fuck it, I'm going to do this. A kid Go on a quick joyride yeah. and get the fuck out you of Dodge. a punk team that's just trying to fucking... That would make the most sense. Bad, kids but. in the 30s that are... That do in the not Hitlerian indict propaganda. The thirties Dutch you can't. Ch- Dude, children. The thirties Dutch children it were could have been a couple kids, assholes. like little rascals. You have no All of them. Basis for that. I have a basis for nineteen thirties kids being assholes. You just from... don't like clogs. You're pissed at windmills. Do not take it out on the Listen, Dutch kids. The Dutch... the Dutch kids are all right. I'm not saying the entire Dutch people. Just their children. Were a problem Ooh, wow. in the thirties. <laughs> okay, they were assholes. Ride it out, buddy. Those, <laughs> that was fucking those goddamn wow. Dutch kids and their love of windmills and clogs. You're right. I have a problem with them, and I should. And should you? I, I don't know why. Exactly. Just figure it out. You don't have to. It's not facts and science. We don't live in facts and science anymore. We do not. No, that's it's true. It's a fucking whim. It's a. It's a. It's, it's, it's a all about. Whim. It's a whimsy of a, chi- a whimsy of a Dutch child. Wow. The follow up to my book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The whimsy of a windmill. <laughs> yeah. Amaze balls. Okay, so if if we are speaking about uh, something paranormal here, I mean, I guess anything's on the table, right? Ultra terrestrial, whatever, transdimensional. Who fucking knows? It could be anything. What if it is Ghost. a combination of diabolical and angelic? Why does it got to be the devil, though? Why not? And how is it a, a combination yeah, of the devil and an angel? The devil <laughs> possesses the black sedan, as he's wont to do. Just <sighs> for nefarious purposes. He's got he a wants lot to, to do. kill the cows. He wants to kill the bus people. Peter Cromlin? Fuck that dude. He wants them all dead. But an angel takes the wheel, and it's a gripping it's a life fight. and death struggle between the possessed sedan and the angelic being that is doing its damnedest. He can't slow the vehicle down. The devil has some powers, but he can steer it. He can steer it clear of the carnage that the devil car wants <laughs> so, to commit. So the angel's just trying to keep the car straight while so, it's trying to veer to, off They have to go as oblivion. hard the and devil, fast as they can. Okay. Until the car runs out of gas, and then whoever won the duel won the duel. So the devil's in charge of the pedal and to the a acceleration, degree, yeah, the wheel. Because otherwise, the angel would have just turned into a field and ended it right there. Okay. So something's got to keep it where people are. Okay. Again, a diabolical agent. Okay, so AVD, buddy. All I right. can see that being more realistic than just some kids. <laughs> Now, see, the thing is, no, nobody, nobody actually saw nobody Chris's saw expression, Chris's so face. the fact remains he said that. All right, so oh, he what's, literally what's just more plausible? The, floor. That's great. the, 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 oh, shit. the angelic oh, being man. fighting the diabolical car or the invisible fucking Dutch teens? Not invisible. The ducking, oh, yeah, no, the they're ducking not, Dutch no, kids. Du- du- uh, the ducking, ducking Dutch. Dutch. The ducking Dutch. They're or, known for or ducking. Or angel versus devil. Yeah. 
<laughs> you be the you be the you be the judge. Well, if you're yeah. skeptically minded and don't oh. want to look at the facts as they were presented, then right. I'm sure you would embrace. Hey, you know what though? Maybe the magistrate on that case would surely have loved you guys. Maybe the factory. Follow me. Maybe the factory where this car was created. What if one of the workers, like from the line, just like fell into it and died? So and literally, the soul. plot for hold, Christine. Hold on a second. No, child's play, motherfucker. Okay. Yeah, you, right. you remember that? Yeah. Uh, you remember? Brad Dourif? Yeah. No, yeah, I saw exactly. it. Yeah, exactly. Holding <laughs> we, on to the doll well, and speaking the words. What were the what what what, what was it was the, a spell? Who, how am I going to fucking know the word? You, you think you I should. remembered the words? You should. Criminy. You Nobody should. really should. No, honestly. So anyway, you do, this person you falls and dies. As they're dying, they touch the car. Incantation. And they give the the the, the child's play whatever he said. So a serial killer died in a no. French automotive factory. Not a serial killer, a normal worker okay. who dabbles in magic. Okay. Who works there. <laughs> It falls <laughs> into the fucking line. Part time with time magic. Ball, but this is more Auto fucking crazy. Yeah. No, no, and like then it. he fucking possesses himself into the car. Okay. Exactly. To what end? Because then he lives through the car. And so this is the first chance he, he gets to show himself? He was a disgruntled factory worker who lives through the car. And this is the first chance he gets. He can finally spread his wings and fly and live the life he wanted to live. Not the one he was forced to live because of his fucking wife and kids and the job that he didn't want. No, no, no. Now he's a free man in a car as a ghost going straight for a real fucking <laughs> I just, long I'm time. Just, I yeah, don't, okay. exactly. Right, so may, maybe, maybe, you're right, a loveless marriage, kids that were just being dicks don't all the time. Don't forget magical practices. But his lover... The, the Dutch girl There's that he had lover. that brief fling with <gasps> oh, no. in 1931, she lives in Tilburg. <gasps> and once he finds he's her house, to get there. He nearby, to... he's like, then then the whole ouvre, the whole rush to come yeah. alive is there. He has he's to like, get there. I have to see her. Yeah. And she works at the town hall. She She's does. a secretary there. And he hates cows. The mayor's assistant. And he hates oh, children. Oh, no. He choked no, no, on none beef of that. once. He did. He got no. ma- he was all right, mad. Maybe all of that. I'll grant you all of that, but mostly he's like, I can't stop because he has to use all his will to get to his loved one to see her one last time and honk at her. <laughs> Tell her he loves it. Honk car, at her. Car, but, just, but if he slows down a little, car, he just becomes a car just, again. Imagine the car pulls up. Like, I, I don't know why that rules, but. <laughs> and she's like, what the fuck is that? And Hildegard comes out and oh, is like. Fucking Hildegard, yeah. Pierre. <laughs> Hildegard and Pierre. Pierre. Okay, oh, so it's boy. a love story. It has right, to so be. it's a love story. Oh, with, it is. It has a, now I feel good about it. It has a hint of child's play to it, which is always good because we're in November. We just left uh, Halloween, but we're back. So, all right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there, that? There you I don't know what any of that means. You got to always bring Chucky. It was Halloween, but we're back. We're back. You got to bring Chucky into <laughs> you it. You said we're back like we're at the rest of the year that sucks now, so yeah, we're we just are. doing the best we um, can. <laughs> So, I mean, I guess, I don't know, what do we want to go with? I mean, skeptically, I think Chris and I are leaning towards an infant stealing a car. Sure. A little you, tiny baby with uh, stilt legs. And you're thinking... Uh, 14 um, mirrors and an ability to crouch I mean, in positions that cannot be seen when police are driving next to yeah. you. Yeah, use that of, makes sense. Your use of mirrors is interesting. No, it's a ghost love story. It's a ghost love That's story, yeah. makes more sense. That it really does. does. I mean, I really... I was in love <laughs> yeah, with, really the, does. with the angel-demon duel, but honestly, love always has to win the day. I think we all are softies at heart, and love will, I want this dude, to be. Love will find a way, dude. Pierre and Hildegard making it happen yeah. one last time. Yeah, and you know he, she came out. She buffed the fender. He had a little dying oh. honk. It was over. <laughs> he could move on. She could finally be at peace yeah. with the whole thing. Get married, live her life. Maybe they'd meet in the afterlife. And poor fucking Vincent Mansfeld that guy, would forever walk to the he's, cobbler he's, shop. Yeah, he's never driving. Yeah. And I never understanding should... that what he did was facilitate the greatest pre-war love story ever, and yet he he was doomed to fucking live a shitty, walking corn-filled life. I think he should just in heaven. still like get over this and like understand that trauma is trauma. And we all experience it, but it's how you get through it that really makes you. So he should just get over his car trauma or I... lack of. And drive a fucking car. Totally wish you could have gone back to pre-1950 and told him. But I wish I could, but unfortunately I was not hey, born. what if one of us is Vincent Mansfeld reborn? I feel like and I'm this not. is us working it out. I'm the only one with a car, so I'm pretty sure, there's, yeah. there's two of you that could be Vincent Mansfeld. No, 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 no. Because I did give up cars. Yeah, Chris I did too. Chris gave up cars, and you just don't have one. Just fuck them. And the, the one that I was going to sell you, I traded in for my car. You did? So, yeah, sorry. No, I didn't want it. 
It's Good. the Vincent I in me. I didn't want to give it to you. I didn't want to sell it to you. I would have felt bad. Good. Like, Thank you. We all sorry, worked Rob, out. Sorry, Rob. When the fucking, when all the shit They actually had them. a really good chance of driving off on you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that car did, yeah. That car did. All right, so there you have it. There is our take on Terror Drive. We are all Vincent Mansfeld in our heart. love. How about that? How about we rename this to Unrepentant Love? I, love well, Drive? See, I don't know. Do you really, are you sure about Unrepentant? I'm not. I think it's an infant that stole a car, or just a, a possible. In, I'm just. I'm in, not sure about infant. the phrase "unrepentant." <laughs> a, a baby infant, stole a car. A baby stole a car. <laughs> <laughs> Unrequited, maybe. Whatever. No, love will not repent. Okay. It loves. It's other. You, you, you just like to say words and then put them out there, <laughs> yeah. and then you make me live with them. <laughs> you've it you've no known sense. me for how long? Yes, and I love you despite. Yeah, exactly. This is how. This right, is how so our relationship unrepented. works. Unrepentant. <laughs> I know. Irreducible <laughs> love. <laughs> <laughs> but as Pierre oh. was barreling towards his true love, a demon had still infused itself in the car and was trying to kill people while an angel was trying to wrestle him away from people. But all Pierre cared about was getting to Hildegard. So as he went dead up to his true love, this whole other duel was going on. And really it is the story of mankind in 30 square miles in Netherlands. Amen. <sighs> Thank you all too much. for joining love, us. Good, evil, Cows. It was a stuck it gas pedal. It is the battle. story <laughs> of stuck, humanity. It was a stuck, stuck gas pedal. And he <laughs> fucked up his switch. But I'll tell you what. Let's put this out there. Because our, we have a goodbye. Okay, bye. We have, we have plenty of listeners out there that toss us awesome theories all the time. So you are good listeners. Tell us what your theory on this is. What you think happened. And then I, there's a couple of car heads out there, I'm sure, that can fill us in on some shit. Maybe it's like a simple maximum overdrive. An alien Could intelligence be. yeah, never taking know. over. Yeah, totally. Fuck all you so, flesh uh, bags. So be sure to let us know what you think, what your theories are. Hit us up on the socials, the Instas, the Twitters, the Facebooks. Uh, thank you all so very much for your Patreon contributions. Patreon.com slash Podcast. Yeah, you guys are the best. You all are the best. Like, literally... Every time I read anything anyone posts, it makes my fucking life. I cannot believe that you're into this with us and we're all on this journey. And thank you so fucking much. And those folks that actually belong to the Patreon, thank you too for furthering, enabling us to do this. This is really yeah. the coolest thing I think I've done outside of like awesome life things like totally in terms of an endeavor with friends this is just oh yeah 100 yeah no this is like this has worked out way better than we thought actually it, it worked out so well that we're like okay we need to get a lawyer and a tax person yeah but so, it's not, you know, not even like it's that. Yeah, good. the financial part's it's nice good. but to me it is just the connections we're yeah, making no the it's people all, we're meeting yeah. the ideas we're getting like to me this is what this is like what literally the democratization of the internet should be. Yeah. We oh, can yeah, just hang 100%. out with all you motherfuckers and talk and just exactly. become a better thing. There you go. And we're all gonna get better. So thank you so very much. Um I said the Insas and the Twitters. Yeah. I did the Patreon. Oh, so stick them. around for the shout outs after the after the music. Wait, we're gonna be back with Patreon shout outs. So stick around for that. Indeed. Um, we, Robert and I, again, are going to be at the CNY Mystic Con 2019 Finger Lakes Mall in Auburn, New York, Saturday, November 16th, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Chris, I believe, will be drunk. Oh, that's drunk. like nine fucking hours. Yeah, it is. Oh, yeah. hey, we're there. We're there. And so, to win it. Yeah, come and say hi. We have a table, and we're going to be talking to people. And if you have beer people, in your trunk and you so, invite us out to say hi to you more cordially. So come and say hi to us. Too. Uh, uh, yeah, so that's happening, and uh, I believe that's that's all, right? That, that is it. That is it. Thank you all for joining us, and we're talking to you soon. Goodbye. I love you guys. I'll <laughs> be seeing you. Thank you all so very much for sticking around for our Patreon shout outs and thank you all to our Patreon contributors. We appreciate it all so very much. And again, that is patreon.com slash podcast. So with shout outs, let's get started with Althea Simmons, Cinderwolf, Ben Hutchins. Oh, nice. I'm going to continue with Andrew Geierman, Andre Legedza. I hope I got that right. Legedza. I think it is. And Elizabeth Budrowitz. Holy, I got oh, the gee, tough Yeah, names. you did. Yeah, you did. The wow. Budrowitz. Wow, but was... I think it's Budrowitz. Okay. Um, and uh, 
I hope I got it right. And if I didn't, I promise I'll say them again correctly if you send me Just what it is. Just email us. We'll yep. take care of you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, perfect. And continuing on, I, we got Johnny Melia, Ryan Roberts. The tough one. Chris mastered it. Yeah. You know, I was it. worried. I'm like, I don't know how I would say that, but Chris came through. Right. And Laura Jensen. Oh, Laura. Oh, Laura yeah. Jensen. No shit. Thank Sweet so baby much. cheese it's Awesome. All right, continuing on, we got B. With an exclamation point. <laughs> right. Authority. B. Arthur. Yeah. Aunt B. Yeah, actually, Just B. She's, uh, she's, she sent us a couple of messages, and she's been pretty active in the Patreon. So thank you so very much, B. We appreciate that. Uh, Nathan Moss. Jeff G. Word up. We're going to continue with Jeremy Fryer. Chris with a K. Oh. Solo. Dope. Gender free. Nondescript. I like Chris that. Chris with a K. An individual of mystery. And Chris Cataldi. Very nice. Dope. Continue on. Cedric. Cedric. Oh, shit. Plain Thank old you so Cedric. Very, Thank you so right very on. much, Cedric. Eric Sinus. Sinus, I would say. Sinus, right? Like cynical, but sinus. That's right. Yeah. Sinus. Yeah, I would say so. Cool name. Totally. The dope. And Talon Wise. Ooh. Awesome. Oh, my God. If somebody really named their kid Talon, you're the best. And you Dude. better be a falconer. Yeah, totally. Totally. So there you have it. There is, we are officially cut up on our Patreon. Shout outs again. Thank you all so very much. We appreciate your contributions. And that is patreon.com slash Podcast. One dollar gets you a shout out. Five dollars gets you a shout out and some bonus audio. What? Which is uh, extra saucy. What I was the admit. last bonus Saucery. audio that we put up? It was uh, our personal story. That was oh, our, yeah. our, our story. Our first part right? of our individual our hauntings. Uh, yeah, we, it <laughs> no, it was all. It was our moments hauntings. where we might have traipsed into the paranormal ourselves. Just saw and thing. or people we know. Yeah. Maybe saw yeah. a thing. Okay, so for November, we put that up. In October, we have one coming up, uh, Fungus Among Us. Which That's is, a fun one. Which we did last week, which, which was pretty fucking cool. Uh, and then we're going to record another one in a few minutes here. So, yeah, we've got some pretty cool episodes already over there. I mean, there's a backlog, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, let me check my uh, my podcast app here. But I do believe that we are up around uh, how many episododes? It looks as though we have uh, 16 total Patreon oh, episodes. Shit. Yeah, we have 16 Building total. up. So. A backlog. Yeah. So check that out. Thank An you alternate all. history, oh, if you will. Yeah, a whole separate podcast that comes out twice a month that you pay five bucks for. Whoa. Hey, oh, oh, no. There you go. It's the what? deal of his head. It is. Uh, <laughs> speaking of... Well, we'll talk about this off air, but there might be another Patreon thing happening, a different Patreon show coming up soon. So we'll talk about that later. Thank you all so very much for your contributions, and we'll be talking to you soon. Bye. Again. Really, though. Second goodbye. Second goodbye. goodbye. Second goodbye. Second goodbye. <laughs> Second goodbye. Second goodbye. I don't, it always feels Second like it's goodbye. the tertiary goodbye. goodbye. <laughs> we had a Cotton Eye Joe thing happening for a second there. Second goodbye. No, second God damn it. Goodbye. No, just oh, let whatever. them go. Let All them right, leave. Fine, fine. Okay, right? bye. They've done their fucking business. Let them go. They have. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. I miss you already. Bye. <laughs>